what is up everybody it is your boy fry thank you once again for tuning in shout out to everyone that is always subscribing liking and commenting you know post a comment in the comment section if you have any questions always answering hit me up on instagram and yeah today we'll pretty much be talking about how to uh you know get your vocal to sit in the mix i see that video a lot and essentially the question is really like how to mix the vocals or how to get them to blend in that's what mixing really is right so i'll just be giving you my tips and tricks to um especially mixing your vocals to a two-track instrumental i know that is so popular these days um but yeah so we'll just listen to what i have and then i'll kind of give you a few tips and tricks it's not just going to be one tip because you know um if one thing fixed everything you know we wouldn't really have these tutorials on youtube so yeah Let's get it straight into it, don't forget to like, and yeah. Bad. Run into the money, yeah, until my feet are sore. I got bags on bags, we got racks on racks. Run into the money, yeah, until my feet are sore. I got racks on racks, we got racks on racks. Yo, fuck all of y'all, fuck all of y'all, fuck all of y'all. They were hating on me, never believed in me, yeah, hating on me, never believed. Alrighty, so yeah, I just turned my volume down. It was set really loud. I don't know what I was doing. I was probably adjusting my microphone levels beforehand. But yeah, so pretty much you can see right there. Um, I'll play it again. Um, Run into the money until yeah, my feet are sore. I got bags on bags. We got racks on racks. Run into the money until. Yeah, just so you can kind of see the mixer and. Um, so if you see what's going on, if we look at the levels, let's just pay attention to the instrumental levels and then our vocal bus levels, which essentially are our two outputs for all of our music. Run into the money until my feet are sore. I got bags on bags, we got racks on racks. As you can see right there, I've got the vocal, which is pretty much as loud as the loudest part of the beat. So that is a decision that you need to make beforehand. Um, you know, you need to decide, do you want your vocal to be you know kind of under the mix you know what i mean within the mix do you want it to be on top of the mix because that's really going to depend on how you're going to eq the song because if your vocals are too loud and not eq'd properly they might come across as way too boxy you know what i mean so you really got to decide that level um but we'll keep it simple so the first thing i would like to talk about is obviously record your vocals the way you would want it to sound um without eq you know what i mean eq should really just be to you know kind of clean up and tighten up the vocal you have you know so i kind of focus really on you know, I don't record with the EQ on, so I would turn that off, for example. Run into the money until my feet are sore. I got bags on bags, we got racks on racks. Run into the money until my feet are sore. I got racks on racks, we got racks on racks. You know what I mean? That That's kind of a creative decision afterwards to say, okay, cool, so we've got what we have. It doesn't sound too bad. It sounds nice. It's punchy, but I want to go for that trebly vocal. Then you can start doing that trebly vocal thing. You know what I mean? Or you could just record your vocal treblish, but at the same time, uh, you might have issues uh, mixing that then. You know what I mean? You, you're going to have to subtract a lot of the frequencies to get it kind of level again. So, you know, that's the first tip is just decide um, how you want that vocal tone to sound in your head and then you can adjust your microphone I will attach a video link uh, in the description on how to record vocals um, In terms of mic placement there's a really cool video that I've watched that you can watch So yeah, that's the first thing is set the tone um, Now somebody in the in the previous video when I did do this full um, vocal effect breakdown They said oh man, you've recorded your vocals really loud, but essentially I haven't you know if you look at this waveform It's not clipping at all um, the way you can tell is you know the distance between where you can kind of see that text or where you can see this red boundary and this vocal you know things aren't really that loud you know what i mean look how much headroom we have so really how i'm getting that loudness is just from a bit of compression so i'm using this kind of um footy compressor just to gain it so you know i'm recording through this mic input and then i'm going into this channel but if i turn this off you can kind of see the true level of the vocal. Run into the money until my feet are sore. I got bags on bags, we got racks on racks. You know what I mean? So I'm hitting minus six at loudest, which is fine. You know what I mean? I don't think that's too bad. I generally think that you should aim for around minus 18 to minus six is a nice level. I think that it's a good, um, depending on your room and all of that. If you have a really, uh, you know, noisy room, you shouldn't really be recording too loud because you're going to pick up a lot of the room reflections. So it's always cool to record a bit softer. And then once in your door, you can lift the level a bit because that way you're really going to be enhancing the uh, vocal and not so much the noise within the recording. Because the more you turn up your preamp game, 
the more you, you pull up the mechanical noise, which is like the, the hiss, as well as the room tone. So, you know, you can kind of focus on that. Um, that's going to make mixing your record a lot easier because you want a neutralized vocal um, to mix. You know what I mean? You don't want a roomy sounding, uh, hissy sounding, uh, noisy sounding recording. You're not going to ever be able to blend your vocal with the beat. So anyway, now that that's out the way, uh, the next thing is obviously uh, the instrumental itself. You know, I, one thing I realized um, that I've learned while editing my voice um, on Adobe is when I put background music, the sound of my vocal or the voiceover actually changes. So that that really, um, in layman's terms, means that the instrumental with the voice really, you know, your ears are kind of tricked to how much quality you have. Um, with those two things in comparison if that makes sense so the higher quality the instrumental the better your voice is going to sound without any effects because you know your ear is being entertained by a good quality instrumental you know now if you have which on youtube these days you know it's really common to see a lot of people starting off making beats and their beats are sounding very much two-dimensional you know it's kind of the standard uh guitar sample with you know a bit of 808 drums but the 808 drums are not mixed well uh the guitar sample is muddy you know how are your vocals going to fit into that you know what i mean so it's really important to get high quality instrumentals so if we take a second just to listen to this beat um we can see what i've done to enhance it and we can see what it sounds like beforehand so let's get into that so this is with um, everything that I've done on. So this is all just these are all just effects like filters and stuff. But these are the main effects that I'm using to enhance the beat. So there you go, you got an idea of what the beat sounds like. Really nice, man. Lots of nice space and definition um, in between the melody. It's kind of spread to the sides. The hi-hats are kind of moving a bit, you know what I mean? You want it to be live and entertaining. Um, the 808 is nice and punchy, but not too overly bassy that it becomes muddy. Um, but yeah, so essentially what I do is EQ, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm popping the snare a little bit. I have talked about this in the previous video. Using a transient designer just to, you know, get those hi-hats to, to click through a bit better. Um, and then using an isotope imager just to spread that melody a little bit more and then an R bass which is you know as I said before a really cool uh, hip hop trick to enhance two track instrumentals it has a built in limiter so you can do a little bit of processing and then you can kind of hear it limited you know if you're doing too much then it's going to sound a bit crushed but you know for the most part it's, it should sound fine so if I turn this off and then I play um, well, we'll listen to that and then we'll, we'll play the vocal as well See what I'm saying? So now when I turn these off and play the, the vocal with the beat, it's gonna sound like a totally different song. So run into the money until my feet are sore. I got bags on bags, we got racks on racks. Run into the money until my feet are sore. I got racks on racks, we got racks on racks. You know what I mean? That's cool. But now if we turn everything back on. And I did do a little level adjustment just to get the levels right. Bang. Run into the money until my feet are sore. I got bags on bags, we got racks on racks. Run into the money until my feet are sore. I got racks on racks, we got racks on racks. So yeah, the only thing really is I, I have clipped it a little bit. You you are hearing quite a bit of clipping, but I like that it's trap music. Uh, you know, you there are really no rules. Um, so yeah. That's essentially all, man. Um, you know, one other thing I can talk about is obviously the headroom. So as you can see, because I'm so close to zero on, on all of these channels, uh, we are getting, you know, really close to digital distortion. So what I like to do is send everything to this pre-master volume button, which essentially is just a a fader before our master output, you know, going to our speakers. You know what I mean? So I can drop that level and that way, you know, because we're working digitally, we're not losing any artifacts as long as I'm not clipping too crazy. Um, you know, when we hit our, our, our master bus, we're not clipping, you know what I mean? So those are just some tips and tricks, um, you know, that you can do, use to achieve a better sound, you know, high quality recording techniques, high quality instrumentals, um, you know, using the right amount of EQ that fits with your vocal and fits with the beat. Um, and then, you know what I mean? 
just leveling everything out you know that's really going to get you a better result so hopefully that made sense uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comment section hit me up on instagram if you have any further questions and yeah man i'll see you in the next video peace out